During exploration of the Wadrax system, we identified a continental world designated Wadrax 5. The planet was coated by some sort of impenetrable energy shield. The adjacent moon contains ruins of a large military complex that seems to be powering the shield. The complex appears to have been abandoned many thousands of years ago. Further investigation on these ruins have revealed that the abandoned base was built by the Armistice Initiative. They were a semi-permanent alliance of at least five large and hyper-advanced interstellar powers who were active in this region of space approximately 75,000 years prior to our arrival. The exact nature of this alliance is unknown, but it appears to have been committed to bringing an immediate end to several long-running galactic wars. Large military contingents from each member were stationed on the base of this moon. According to computer logs pulled from the ruined base, Wardrax 5 was the capital world of one of the Armistice Initiative's enemies. Indeed, the data suggests that the Initiative was formed partially at least to stop this empire's genocide. The planet, according to the logs, is designated as Belligerent Party C's homeworld. Apparently, the Initiative sought to make an example of this empire. After invading their space and winning several hard-fought battles, the initiative permanently imprisoned the homeworld of belligerent party C behind this energy barrier. The military base was then set up to protect the shield generator and act as a response force in the unlikely event of containment failure. The military base on the moon was kept operational for several centuries, but with no sign of containment failure, the forces were gradually scaled back. Shifting alliances and infighting between the various initiative members eventually left the base completely deserted. Automated systems were left in place to maintain the shield, and up till now they have remained fully functional. I have ordered the shield to be lowered in the hope to make contact with the race of aliens living behind it. Diplomacy with a race of advanced aliens over 75,000 years old would be quite the achievement to add to my record, and perhaps they will appreciate us unlocking them from their artificial prison and reward us with some advanced technology. We lowered the shields and have been able to scan the planet for the first time. The planet is coated in colossal structures. It is a giant city akin to an ecumenopolis. It must have been home to billions of individuals. However, scans detect no current life signs. It seems that none of the original inhabitants remain. My science teams delve into the giant city planet, but the disappearance of the planet's population remains a mystery. Once the shield was erected around them, the planet was isolated from the rest of their interstellar empire. That likely resulted in massive famine and civil unrest, as they struggled to support their colossal population with the limited resource they had. One would assume that foundries ground to a halt and all advanced resource output was stopped overnight. However, bizarrely, there are no signs that they demolish parts of their city planet to cultivate land. Nothing suggests that any infighting took place after the shield went up, and yet there are no remains, fossilised or otherwise, of the inhabitants. It's as if they simply vanished into thin air. The eerie and empty streets of this dead world do not betray what happened to the original inhabitants. We have found posters and pamphlets that give mention to some sort of evacuation day, they are typically accompanied by pictures of a galaxy that our astronomers do not recognise. The slogans on these posters make statements such as Evacuation Day, Today is the Day, Report to your nearest relocation centre as soon as possible to begin your new life. What this evacuation day was and where these people went is currently unknown. My search teams were held up briefly. Our chief archaeologist, Dr. Sashki, reported having a disturbing vision. Whatever the content of this vision was is unclear, and Dr. Sashki has been taken off the project and locked in their quarters. Ramblings of psionic creatures will do nothing but create doubt and fear and interfere with further investigation of this world. It appears whatever afflicted Dr. Sashki is affecting the rest of the team. As the team slept, a fire broke out, destroying a large portion of the team's provisions. No one was harmed, but I've made it clear further setbacks will not be tolerated. Extra provisions have been supplied. During routine search, we found a device that may have been affecting our science team. Seemingly, it can drastically amplify one's emotional state, and the effect intensifies the closer you get to it. 
Apparently, the device was commonly used across the planet to intensify stimulation. This one, found in some sort of entertainment complex, had been left on in one of the back rooms and remained active all this time. We theorise that it can also affect your dream state, making it much more active, which hopefully explains the setbacks we've experienced. In any case, the answer of where the inhabitants of this planet went remains the most pertinent question. Clearly the planet has been abandoned, but there is no evidence that the shield was ever dropped. As we push deeper into the cities, clues point to the pursuit of a massive research project that predates the shield being raised. Administrative records show that a vast amount of resource and science staff were diverted to this project, greatly increasing in number around the time that the shield went up. After an intense search, we have discovered where the inhabitants of Wadrax 5 went. Deep inside a tall fortified structure near the planet's northern pole, we found a relic that our archaeologists are convinced holds an actual galaxy. This device is remarkably small. It is the equivalent size of a handheld scanner, no larger than 10 centimeters across and can easily be held in one's hand. Somehow, after creating this galaxy, which our science team have absolutely no idea how to replicate, the inhabitants of this world relocated into it and then somehow managed to seal it into this container with some sort of impervious subspace field. My scientists tell me that we are unable to interfere with the galaxy itself, but we can ship it back to Earth for further study. I've studied many ancient civilizations and documented countless relics, but I must note that this race's achievements are truly staggering. My physicists tell me that we could throw this device into a star and it would come out the other side totally undamaged. It is truly remarkable and perhaps one of the greatest feats of science I've ever witnessed. The power of the Armistice Initiative must have been substantially great in order to defeat the race that we will sadly only know as Belligerent Party C. Creators of the miniature galaxy and perhaps the greatest physicists to have ever lived in this galaxy. If you enjoyed this story and wish to hear another, then please click the video on screen now.